we have a, a guest here this morning that we've been really looking forward to chatting with. Her name is Bree Clark. She is a TEDx speaker. She is the founder of the Amon Project, among many other things. Good morning, Bree. Good to see you. Morning, guys. Morning. Thanks for having me. Oh Thanks my so gosh, much. we are we are so excited. I, I wanted to talk first of all. You know, gosh, this overarching thing. Why you started the Amon Project? Because this, to me, is something that is wholly and completely <laughs> inclusive. So let's talk about it. Okay, well, I certainly have like turned my pad, pet my pain into my passion. Um, I wanted to ensure that everyone had a seat at the table, no matter who they are, where they're from, where they're going, their race, religion, color, ethnicity, because I always felt that I did not belong and there was never a seat at the table for me. So I wanted to create this for everyone else. When you talk about that, talk not, about not feeling included, what what do you think it was? Was it the fact that you're a woman in business? Was it in part because you're a black woman? Was it in part it because of things. any number um, of things? It was a few things. It was because um, I am a black woman. Um, it was also because of the size. I'm a plus size black woman and I have a pretty strong direct tone. And for a long time, being um, having such a direct tone and a voice and speaking up for what you believe in and what you stand by, it's sometimes considered, you know, kind of shunned. So I was never really called to the table because of who I was. Well, now you're calling everybody to the table with these floral workshops, which when, when you say it off, you know, offhand, it sounds just really light and, and airy, but there's a, a deeper meaning and a deeper purpose it here is. in that you are helping people to relieve stress and you're truly including everybody. Yes, definitely. Um, that is the main purpose of it. You know, I wanted to, we wanted to have, create a space for uncomfortable conversations. Mm. And for me, the best way to do that was to do it around flowers, to have that light and airy feel. But like I said one time on my um, workshop last week, the gloves were off. You know, I wanted to have those conversations and just like use the words that for the longest time that I hid. You know, I covered racism with diversity. And right now it's just like, I want to put it all on the table because as a, as a country, as a society, as a community, we deserve that. Let me ask you something, and you talked about uncomfortable conversations. We heard Mark Cuban say we have to have, those of us who are white, uncomfortable conversations with our black friends. Matthew Correct. McConaughey has said it. We're going to talk about it a little later in the show. How do those conversations start? Are there ground rules? What, or is there a latitude of forgiveness that we all just sort of come together, person to person, and learn from each other? You know, uh, Mark Cuban has been such a great leader in this and also a mentor to me without him knowing it. But we have, like you said, we have to learn, we have to listen, we have to unite. The biggest thing is listening um, and know that it's being said out of love. Sometimes when you speak out of love and when you're speaking from the heart, it can be taken the wrong way. But if you're coming from a good place, that I think that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. And then understanding both sides. It's emotional for everyone, whether you're black, brown, white, um, purple, peach, as my son say, it's an emotional time for every single person right now. So we have to be compassionate, but also at the same time being compassionate, we have to be real too, because there's real issues that's happening. You know, let's talk about those sweet boys really quickly. Um, they're seeing the protests. <laughs> babies. Oh my gosh, they're so yeah, cute. You guys have family. got to go to her Instagram, all the family photos, they just eat them up. Um, you've, they, they're seeing what's going on with these protests. How are you navigating that with them? How, how much do you explain and, and how do you take them through that conversation? You know, it's a little difficult, I have to say. You know, my babies, they're eight years old. Um, so we don't have, we have the conversations, but it's a way that you have to do it. I grew up in a predominantly white area. My parents really didn't have that many conversations with me about it because of the area that I was in. My sons are growing up in that area as well. So just this week, um, my husband and I sat down and we just chatted with them and we asked them like, how do you feel with what's going on? We have, this is an emotional time for kiddos now, you know, with COVID happening out of school, forever not around their friends and their family we just want to make sure that we're not just teaching them about being kind and being compassionate but also loving others and making sure that others love you no matter the color of your skin so having those real talks with your kiddos is everything Bree, such an amazing message Bree Clark joining us this morning thank you for being part of morning after and we we hope you come back we want people to know that your floral workshop is coming up on Sunday June 28th 3 to 4 p.m. And you can check it all out at the Iman Project, I-M-A-N, the Iman Project.
Com. Yes, all of it's out on her Instagram page too. She's a great follow and, I, and she's just such an emerging leader in our community. So I'm grateful she's been a part of the show. Yeah.